Who told him, Ray? I am grateful to the Minister for his response. Um, as he knows, economic crime costs the people of this country £100 billion per annum, according to the National Crime Agency. The Government has repeatedly committed to legislate to give our agencies the tools they need to tackle this problem. It was there very concerning to hear from my noble friend Lord Agnew, who recently resigned from his role as Minister responsible for countering fraud, that a decision has been made to drop the Economic Crime Bill from the legislation due in the next parliamentary session. This is not a notional white-collar offence. It affects real people in very tangible ways. Terrorists and drug dealers depend on it to launder and legitimise their money through UK banks, companies and properties. Up to 50% of monies flowing through Russian laundromats, often used for tax avoidance, stolen public funds and to launder monies derived from organised crime flowed through UK shell companies. UK corporate structures were involved in arms deals which breached sanctions in the Sudan. HSBC and NatWest have been fined hundreds of millions of pounds for allowing criminals and Mexican drug cartels to launder their money through accounts held at their banks. Around £5 billion of taxpayers' money, as an estimate, in the form of bounce-back loans has been taken fraudulently because some banks have not applied the most basic of checks. Criminals, despots and terrorists involved in people trafficking, illegal immigration, drug dealing, extortion, kleptocracy, the impoverishment of nations and fraud, including directly from the public purse to the tune of £30 billion per annum, are all facilitated by some of the lax rules we have in this country. The Government has promised to tackle this by means of Companies House reform, as my honourable friend says, to fund regulation by applying a small surcharge to the current cost of, apply, of establishing a company in the UK, so we can close down those shell companies and trusts. To induce a register of overseas entities to reveal the real beneficial owners of UK property. Yeah, yeah and a corporate offence of failing to prevent economic crime. So, for example, <coughs> banks can be he properly held to account for granting those fraudulent bounce-back loans. All, right. All this, plus more resources for our agencies and new whistleblower protections, will boost this country's reputation, tackle crime and help to lower our tax burden. Every minister I've spoken wants to do this. The Treasury Select Committee wants to do this. Uh, all our crime agencies want to do this. Campaigners want to do this. I urge the government to bring forward this legislation as soon as possible. Yeah.